My state was also asked to take a bow. Senator George Akume was asked to take a bow. Uh, Mustafa Babashi, who he also asked to take a bow for, uh, as a member of the Borno State House of Assembly at the time. Another person who was asked to take a bow was Otumba Richard Adeni, the Deputy National Chairman of the All Progressives Congress in the South. Ramatu Tijani, a woman, was asked to take a bow. Uh, Senator Dele K. Mamora was asked to take a bow. Senator Tayo, uh, Tayo Alasso Adura was asked to take a bow. Rotomi Amechi and Abubakar Ali were well also asked to take a bow. The next nominee is making his way into Chenba. He is from Nasarawa State. So much colleagues. The next nominee is uh, Al Haji Abdullah Mohammed Hassan, the nominee from Nasarawa State. Al Haji Hassan, on behalf of my colleagues, I want to welcome you to the Hallowed Chambers of the Senate. We already have copies of your CV, but you can still highlight any part of your CV that you feel the Senate needs to know or take note of, and you can also give any further information that may not be in the CV. Once again, after your presentation, senators will ask the relevant questions for the screening exercise. You can address the Senate. Uh, thank you, distinguished Senate President, distinguished principal officers of the Senate, other very distinguished senators here present, especially Senators Abdullah Hademu, Umaru Tonka Mukura, and Godia Kwashiki. Mr. President of the Senate, before I proceed to do a brief introduction, may I crave your kind indulgence to make a very slight correction on my resume. If you look at page one of my resume, sir, under work experience. It says February 2017 to date. It is actually February 2017 to 29th May 2019. Having said that, Mr. President, permit me to put on record my very kind appreciation to Mr. President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces for finding me worthy to be nominated to serve in the Federal Executive Council. I know in my state there are so many more qualified persons, but in spite of that, Mr. President, in his own wisdom, chose me. I remain eternally grateful and humbled. Secondly, Mr. President, it is also very humbling that this very distinguished Senate has exercised its discretion to scream my humble self. I assure you, Mr. President, I will not take this privilege for granted. Finally, sir, I want to say that I want to put on record my very kind 
appreciation to distinguished Senator Abdullah Hadamu for starting a mentoring program which is crystallizing today. Mr. President, we want to know that I served under now Senator, former Governor Abla Ademu, as the Attorney General under the PDP. Again, Mr. President, again, Mr. President, I was, I was equally very privileged to serve under Senator Moro Chonka Mukura as the Attorney General and then subsequently the SSGC's government under IPC. <laughs> and in the course of my job as the SSG and the Attorney General, I had cause to interact with the then Deputy Speaker of the Nasarawa House Assembly, uh, Senator Godia Kwashiki. So I am giving these inferences, Mr. President, to underscore the experiences, the mentorship I got from these very distinguished senators from my state. Through this exposure, I was able to understand the intricacies of intra-party politics at a micro level. Again, they have taught me that public service is about sacrifice. It is on this premise that I'm here to humbly present myself for this screen exercise. Thank you, Mr. President. Very distinguished Senator Abdullah Adamu Chalakin Kevi, former governor, former minister. Thank you, thank you very much. Mr. President, on the chair, very distinguished colleagues, I am Senator Abdullahi Adam, and I represent Nasarawa West. Distinguished chair, I want to lead discussions in the Senate's consideration of the nominee before us. Al Haji Muhammad Abdullah Hassan started his career, I would say, in my hands. first time I got to understand his involvement and interest in politics was around the year 1995-1996 in his first deed for elected office as chairman of his local government at the time. He served the local government and by the time I became governor of the South States in 1999, I had no problems whatsoever answering the call of the people of my constituency and this local government to consider him for appointment as Attorney General of the South States. He served the state creatively, and after my office, my successor had him come back to the state to serve as an advisor. The government of Al-Hajj Makura again sought his services 
and brought him back to serve as Attorney General. And towards the end of that administration, brought him in as Secretary to the State Government. I want to lend my voice and seek the support of this Hallow Chamber on two major grounds. The first one is the one I've just talked about. The second one is the fact that there is a yearning by Nigerians, particularly the up and coming young Nigerian men and women, to have the young get opportunities to serve this country. Mohammed Ablai Hassan is a budding young politician and immediately we did hear his nomination for ministerial appointment. The three of us who are sent representing the Sawa State we are unanimous to give him the support he needs to be able to have the National Assembly, the Senate uh, accept his nomination and you know, recommend him as such for swearing in by the his Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The second reason is, based on his profile and the services has rendered, he has been exposed to have inter-party and intra-party experience at this very formative age. He also was privileged by the offices he held to have experience in inter-ministerial, intergovernmental, you know, relationships that are critical in the federal system of government, the type we operate. I therefore would want to appeal to my colleagues in the spirit of our commitment to give the youth opportunity. In our zone, he is the youngest ministerial nominee. And all our colleagues are unanimous in agreement to give him the support that he needs so that the young will have a position to grow. I therefore do recommend to Mr. Pre Mr. Chairman that uh, in the spirit of the moment that this nominee takes a bow. I so to thank you. I'm not too young to be a minister. No mind. Senator Omar Tanku Al Makura. President, my distinguished colleagues, let me thank you for giving me the opportunity to contribute to this discussion on the nomination of Barisa Mohammed Abdullahi. Uh, in supporting his nomination, Mr. President, I would like to bring to the knowledge of my colleagues uh, the much I know about Barisa Mohammed, because this is a person that has worked with me for eight years that I had been in office as governor of Nasarawa State. He had been my attorney general. He had been my special advisor. And in the last lap of my tenure, uh, in the last four years, uh, he was my secretary to the state government. I would like to say without any fear of contradiction that I can attest to the fact that Barsa Mohammed is a committed person, someone that is highly competent and loyal. This is someone that is so versatile because he has got experience across the board, from the private sector to the banking sector to the law profession and to central administration in government, go governance. I believe such persons with this kind of pedigree are uh, persons that would add value to the administration of this country. I believe if it pleases my distinguished colleagues, 
uh, to grant this nominee the opportunity to bow. I believe this country would be better for it because I have known Barisa Mohammed and what he has been able to do as one who has occupied all these positions. And I believe he will bring all these experiences to bear uh, when it's opportune to be uh, given an office to serve as Minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I believe this will increase the competence and add value to the administration of the country. I so submit this person. Thank you. Senator Akwasheki Wodia. Mr. Chairman, my very distinguished colleagues, Akwashiki Gojia is my name, representing Nasara North and Terra District. Mr. Chairman, the gentleman before us today and now, just like my leaders, the former civilian governor of Nasara State, have said, he is a man that will create a fine balance between the public and the rule of law. He was one time Antony Jaran under Adamu, Antony Jaran under Almakura, and let me assure this Red Chamber, he has not gone through the legislative experience, but he is a very good friend of legislature. That is why today you can see all, almost all the member House of Representatives from Nasra State are sitting down there. Almost all the former senators, including your colleague, Senator Damboy, is also there. He is a very good friend of legislature. He is a lover of democracy. He is a lover of peace. That is why almost all the administration in Nasra State, whether he likes it or not, they will invite him to come and be, to come and serve under them, to create a balance between the youths the masses, the elders, and the general public. I want to assure this great chamber that the president, our leader, the leader of this country, will not regret it. And I repeat, he will not regret it. Having find Barrister Abdullahi Mohammed to serve in his cabinet, I want to assure him and to assure the general public that he will bring a lot of experience, especially now that we are having insecurity in most of parts of the country. He is a person that always likes to make things happen according to the rule of law. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for the opportunity. And I want to join my leaders to allow the young man to go and rest so that he will prepare himself to serve Nigeria better. Because he is... <laughs> Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for the opportunity, and I join them to give you soft landing. Thank you very much. Senator Balai Bunala. Thank you very much, Mr. President, and my distinguished colleagues. If you have noticed throughout this process, I maintain an observatory position. I try as much as I can to restrain myself from making comments, but in this case, I think I have a responsibility, both moral and legal, to comment on the nominee. I can vividly say that I'm closely, closely associated with Nasarawa State in the last eight years. <clears throat> and I can say with all degree of responsibility that the nominee, I first met him when he was working with Olani Peku and Co. I think we were doing a matter before Justice uh, I can't remember. And he exhibited a decorum that was hardly associated with somebody of his calling with the years at the bar. 
And from that day, I said, I think he's on his path to greatness. After some time, I discovered that he's in Nasarawa serving the, our brother and friend, Senator Almakura. And I met him briefly when again Senator Almakura invited me to Nasarawa for something. And I said that. <laughs> Well, <laughs> I've always been, I've always been a very good. <laughs> let me, let me. You know, you know there is a way. There is, there is a way the president of the Senate will look at you, and then I know his message. Let me enter a plea of not guilty that throughout my life I have never been a contractor in any state of the federation. I have just been a very good friend of distinguished Senator Almakura, and we were in the struggle together for over four and a half years. He knows. But what I'm trying to say is simple. I can testify to the fact that Nasarawa State has been too lucky to have two things. One, they are governor, and next, they are nominee. I can testify to that fact. And let me urge my colleagues to, in the spirit of dedication of this Senate, to try as much as you can to make available to Nigerians men of goodwill and character. Recommend the nominee to this distinguished Senate for confirmation as a Minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I so do. Distinguished Senator Uche Lilian Okunife. Thank you, Mr. President. My name is Neta Uche Lilian. Mr. President, I represent Anambra Central and from Anambra State. Yeah. Mr. Nomini, congratulations. But first of all, looking at your CV, uh -huh. I can see that you were former Secretary to Nasarawa State Government and former Attorney General of Nasarawa State Government, which means you are very conversant with contractual agreements. Assuming you are chosen as the Minister for Works, I have two questions. This one is for Works. As Minister for Works, how are you going to handle the abandoned road projects in Nigeria? For every contractual agreement, there is a commencement date and completion date. But some contractors have been on this road for 10, 12, 15 years perpetually on those roads. Roads from Enugu to Onecha, Enugu to Kotako, Lokoja to Ajokuta, the same contractor year in, year out. I believe that it's either the federal government has reneged on the agreement or the contractor reneged on the agreement. But the fact remains that the contractors have been there year in, year out. Every year there will be variation. They will do a few meters, leave the projects again. Some contractors will come and do some skeletal work. Some have been abandoned for years. Mm -hmm. If you're choosing as a minister for works, what are you going to do to resist it? Either by cancelling the contractual agreement and rewarding or getting those projects completed. Most of our roads have been abandoned by these contractors based on what issues I have raised. My second question is this. Looking at you, young man, young, handsome guy from Nasarawa. Uh, 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 my question is this. Uh, uh, I'm coming. Uh, uh, I'm protected. Mr. Uh, President, uh, uh, my, my question is this. Mr. Nomini. Mr. Nomini, we are in a world of innovation today. Innovation in the way we do things to proper solutions. Innovation in the way we even handle our homes. Mm -hmm. Now, as a nominee, you don't know the ministry they will post you. We have been experiencing decline in women representation in both elective and appointee positions. Assuming Mr. President wants to do it in a different way by bringing innovation <laughs> and puts you as the Minister for Women Affairs. Oh. 
see the link between the earlier submission of a young handsome man and a minister of women affairs. I didn't see the link. The single senator Albert Akpan Basi. Thank you, Mr. President, my distinguished and colleague, Senator Albert Basi Akpan. Northeast. Mr. President, having to recognize me after uh, Uche Kunifer's um, speech is quite an order, sir. Because I know that um, for the first time, Mr. President, let me even commend the President of Nigeria. Because in this set of ministers, we've seen a lot of young, vibrant Nigerians. Which gives us hope that we look forward to better days uh, ahead. Yes. Mr. President, having looked at the CV and listening to our leader, Senator Bila Adamo, a former governor of Nasarawa State for eight years, and also our leader, Senator Al Makura, a former governor of Nasarawa State for eight good years, with this nominee, went through. Mr. President, I think the real essence of confirmation by the Senate is to counter assess the capacity, the integrity and the personality of these nominees. And if we can have two former governors who has worked with this nominee attesting to his integrity and his capacity, then Mr. President, I think the work of the Senate is made easy. So therefore, without prejudice, to the questions that have been asked on this floor, Mr. President. Because I don't think there is any question that we, this man here will not, uh, will not answer. To save the time of other senators to look at other nominees, and based on the attestations of a two, for, two term former governors, too, I think, Mr. President, the nominee can um, attempt to, to reflect on the uh, comments of Senator Uche Kunifer. Then he takes a, a bow and we leave. I still summon Mr. President. I will check Senator Samegu and then uh, the minority whip and then he responds. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I remain Senator Sam Egu, representing Ebony North Senatorial District. Mr. President, I want to congratulate the nominee, the young vibrant candidate. No. Uh, going through, Mr. Nomini, going through your CV, after you are NYSC in 1994, you only practiced for two years, two years, only two years, you were in the private sector. And from 1996 to date, you have been in government. For 23 good years, you have been in government after graduation. The implication of this, uh, Mr. Nomini, is that you are one of the few lucky Nigerians that graduated and worked for only two years and started getting government appointments. And the two governors you worked through have all testified to your service, which is very good. 
My question, therefore, is not all Nigerian youths are as lucky as you are. As a minister, what policies would you advise the executive government, the, the, the federal government, or Mr. President, to initiate on behalf of the teeming youths that may not be as lucky as you are, that want to stand on their own in the private sector? In other words, how can you come up with a policy that will help the executive council to support those in the private sector? Those who may not want to be in government line, to go into appointments, to be able to be sufficiently established to have a sense of belonging and to make their business thrive in this country. Thank you very much. Minority Whip. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. Uh, just like I had uh, earlier on said that uh, I will be supporting Niger and uh, Natural State Road, who we share boundaries together with. So I'd like to thank you, Mr. President, for giving me this opportunity. Mr. President, uh, me and Mohamed also, in my, I will attest that we have come a very, very long way. I knew him way back in 1996 when he was uh, the vice chairman of my late brother-in-law who they served and he was his chairman and he was the vice chairman at the time. So I've come a long way with him and I know him very well and I know him as a man of integrity and I know him as somebody who is very straightforward and amiable and that's why the two governors he has had to work with and uh, has had to work with uh, the two executive governors of uh, National State. Uh, Mohamed, mine is a very, very simple question. I didn't need to ask you, but just for you to be able to explain to all of us and then for you to uh, be able to, for us to understand. Uh, you have been company secretary about twice in your career. Uh, what can you do to strengthen our company laws to avoid abuses by uh, directors and to make, uh, to, to, to at least give investors encouragement so that they can invest. And then we do you were SSG and uh, you were attorney general. Uh, I'm sure issues of security will have come before you in the course of the discharge of your duty and responsibility. And I think that uh, uh, only God knows which position you'll be appointed to, but uh, what can you be at, to bring to bear at the national level, looking at the various challenges that we're having today as it relates to security? Thank you very much. Senator Francis Fadawusi. Mr. President, serving as the chair of this, uh, my own question to my young man. By the way, my name is Francis Adifadawusi from Osu State. My question to you, that's the question I've been asking any time I pass to Nasarawa. God's so kind, people have been praising you as a young energetic uh, uh, developer. But my question is, you served under two governors. you are almost the advisor. If you look at the development between uh, Abuja and Nasarawa, you now compare it with, uh, the, the, with the development between Abekuta Road, that is Abekuta and Lagos. You see the development coming up. You see the idea of that particular state, Ogun State, is coming out. The incentive the Ogun State used to law in developers to law in all these uh, industries. I think it's the same incentive you should have used to law in developers from Abuja so that you see a lot of uh, revenue coming up from that side. As soon as you leave uh, Biham University, you will know that you are going to Nasarawa. What 
effort are you going to make now that you are going to be the minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? What new things are you going to introduce to develop Nasarawa through the federal mind? You can respond, please. Uh, on the first question by distinguished Senator Ekunife, if I permit me uh, to pronounce it that way, Mr. President. The challenge we have about contracts when they are drafted uh, from the level of public institutions from experience is that they are sometimes, with all due respect, not properly written. In other words, public officers don't do their own beat. They don't do their own due diligence before, you know, penning their signatures to most contracts. So in most cases, you see the contracts are skewed against the government. That is why you have so much challenges in trying to unbundle such contracts. It is always very difficult because of the legal challenges to immediately review contracts. Some of them are laced with clauses for arbitration. Some of them are laced with clauses for damages or for outright revocation. So to be very candid, distinguished senator, each contract must be taken on case-by-case case basis before you can take what approach you can to either review or revoke or review. So I will, assuming I'm asked to work on those contracts, perhaps the best thing I will do is to suggest a team that will review such contracts and then bring up very legal, sustainable, um, bankable positions that government can adopt. But I don't think I can have a straight jacket answer to say we are going to review the contracts. It will be difficult outrightly because they should be treated on case by case basis. Now, your second question is about assuming. I am sent to the Ministry for Women Affairs, what will I do differently? I think the, the major framework for women empowerment uh, has been elucidated in the Beijing Conference resolutions. What we'll probably do is to domesticate such resolutions and see how we can empower women. Um, we can look at our own various communities and see how programs like women empowerment, soft loans, um, widows empowerment scheme, and probably to a large extent some level of scholarship for vulnerable women. Um, in the interim, Mr. President, I think if I am chosen to be Minister of Women Affairs, I will equally work hand in hand with the First Lady and old and old women organizations to ensure that their challenges are addressed. Senator, distinguished Senator Aduda, if I'm correct, raised the issue of strengthening um, laws governing activities of directors in either public or private companies. Well, he tattoo, there was this understanding or this misconception that some companies are too big to fail in spite of all abuses. That is why easily referable is the issue of um, Enron Corporation in the U.S. 
because it is a very big electricity corporation, a typical American doesn't believe the company can fail. It is too big. It's a behemoth. But somehow, because of insider abuses, because of non-disclosure, because of lack of openness, the company went under. It went into a very dubious debt. So it is exactly the scenario with the defunct NITEL. People thought NITEL has a very robust infrastructure. It has um, a wide coverage. It has a big subscriber base. Therefore, it cannot fail. But it fell. Why? Because people charged with running these companies have taken advantage of some loopholes in our companies and our law to abuse the process. So we need to strengthen, one, our corporate governance rules to ensure much more transparency in the conduct of directors of companies. And then two, we should also adopt the recommendations of the Sarbanes Oxley Act, which is in, in the US, to ensure that every director of either a public water company or a private company makes substantial disclosure where he has interest so that we can avoid interest, conflict of interest. Um, thirdly, I think our so adversary institutions, the Corporate Affairs Commission, the the Corporate Exchange Commission, and other relevant bodies must ensure that annual returns are filed as at when due, so that we could detect telltale signs for any uh, future failure of a public enterprise. Uh, if I get to the right, uh, Mr. President, two more minutes. Have you exhausted the, the questions? Yes, sir. If I... <laughs> Distinguished President, sir. Senator, I do the... Um, made reference to security issues based on my experiences um, interacting with security operatives as the office of the SSG. Um, security challenges is equally sometimes local in nature. So it is important that communities, communities are, you know, made to be the drivers of security challenges in our various communities. From our experience in, in Nassau State, we had what we call community-based conflict resolution mechanism, which is a community-driven uh, security processes from bottom to the highest level of security operations. So what we do is we engage the youth leaders, the women leaders, the security agencies in outpost stations in the communities, village heads, and indeed district heads to ensure that they participate in security processes. That is why, to a large extent, we have been able to minimize issues of harder farmers' conflict, in spite of the notorious nature of such conflict. So I would recommend that such what I choose to call a Makura model can be adopted at the federal level. It is pleasing to see that the IG has embraced the issue of uh, community policing, which is akin to our, our processes at the state level. Now, Senator, distinguished Senator Egu spoke about my privilege of serving the public service. I indeed am privileged and I am indeed honored, sir. And uh, you asked me what policies I need to, we need to do. Well, let, me, let me just say in one word, sir. The youth of Nigeria want only one thing, which is jobs. The youth want jobs. The youth want jobs. So it depends on us at the Executive Council to provide to initiate policies that will translate into multiple jobs for our team and youth. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Distinguished colleagues, you would have noticed that I allowed for more questions to be asked. The essence is to give opportunity to the nominees themselves. These are people who have been nominated and, of course, they have shown competence. And the educators and Nigerians who are watching or listening to this. So it's not to prolong our stay here. Uh, with these brief remarks, I will now put the question. Those in favor of the motion that the nominee takes a bow and go, having exhausted or responded to all the questions, say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. You can take a bow. from the lawmakers despite the pleas from uh, two former governors of Nasarawa State who he served under Abdullahi Adabu and Umar Tanko uh, Al-Bakura and then the third senator from Nasarawa State Akoshiki Godia he still had to answer three questions and they enjoyed the privilege of the take of bow. Now he responded to a few questions and uh, interestingly so some of them were one of them was on women representation if he is made minister. Now that uh, probably raises the question or buttresses the worry of some persons that uh, lawmakers or senators are not, uh, would have no clear idea what portfolio will be uh, attached to or located to these ministries so the questions are not streamlined in a particular direction. Some random questions are 